In this video, I'm going to go through an example problem that applies the first law to a closed system using the steam tables. The problem statement says an insulated vessel has two compartments separated by a membrane. On one side is one kilogram of steam at 400 degrees Celsius and 200 bar. The other side is evacuated. The membrane ruptures, filling the entire volume. The final pressure is 100 bar. Determine the final temperature of the steam and the volume of the vessel. So here, as you can imagine, we have our insulated vessel with one side being steam at 400 degrees Celsius and 200 bar, and the other side is a vacuum. The first step in solving this problem is to write down the first law equation and to simplify it as much as we can. The first law, as you should know, is that the change in the internal energy of the system is equal to the heat out of the system plus the work done on the system. So in this case, our vessel is insulated, so that means that there's going to be no heat transfer to or from the inside of the vessel, so our Q term is going to go to zero. We also know that there is no work done on the system to rupture the membrane, so that the work term is also going to go to zero. So in simplifying, we get that there is no change in the internal energy throughout this process. Since we know both the temperature and pressure of the initial steam in this left side of the vessel here, we can use the steam tables to find the internal energy associated with that state. So if you go to the steam tables in the back of the book, under the superheated water vapor section on page 657, you will find that at 200 bar, which is also equal to 20 megapascals, and 400 degrees Celsius, the internal energy associated with that state is 2,619.2 kilojoules per kilogram. And since we know there is no change in the internal energy of the system throughout this process, the internal energy of the final state, U2, is also going to be the same. But now, here at this final state, the pressure, P2, is equal to 100 bar, which is also 10 megapascals. Since we know both the internal energy and the pressure of this final state, the state is completely specified, and we can now use the steam tables to find the final temperature that we're looking for. So, looking at the steam tables for a pressure of 10 megapascals, you'll find that when the temperature is 325 degrees, the internal energy is 2610.4 kilojoules per kilogram, and when the temperature is 350 degrees, the internal energy is 2,699.2 kilojoules per kilogram. And we know that our final internal energy of the system is between these two numbers, so we will use uh, interpolation to find the final temperature of the system. After interpolating, you'll find that the final temperature of the system is going to be 327.5 degrees Celsius. Next, we need to find the total volume of the vessel. Because from the problem statement we know the total mass of steam, and from the steam tables we would be able to find the specific volume of the steam in its final state, we can use this equation to calculate the total volume of the vessel. So similar to what we did before, now that we know the final temperature of the system, and we know the specific volume at each of these two states, we're going to use this final temperature to interpolate between the two values of the specific volume, uh, and plug it into this equation to get the volume of the vessel. So in the steam tables you'll find that at 325 degrees the specific volume is 0 0.01986 meters cubed per kilogram and at 350 it is 0 0.02242 meters cubed per kilogram. Using this known final temperature and interpolating, you find that the final specific volume is 0 0.02012 meters cubed per kilogram. Plugging this into our equation and recalling that there is one kilogram of steam total within the vessel, you will calculate that the final volume of the vessel is 0 0.02 meters cubed. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it helped you understand how to solve the problem. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more help videos and thermodynamics.